Thank you for the invitation to speak on this topic today. I have no disclosures. So across the surgical literature, there's considerable evidence that um, a variety of inflammatory markers have diagnostic or predictive value for infectious complications or anastomotic leak. And of course, we're all familiar with using the leukocyte count, and that's uh, the most frequently used in our clinical practice. Uh, but now in the era of enhanced recovery protocols, many of our patients are out of the hospital before you would see an elevated white blood cell count or clinical signs and symptoms of an anastomotic leak. And so there's been a great deal of interest in the last several years uh, about identifying other markers that might be predictive at an earlier point in the postoperative time course. And the two that are best studied in the colorectal literature are C-reactive protein and procalcitonin. Now, C-reactive protein, uh, many of us are also familiar with, is a pretty nonspecific marker for inflammatory or infectious conditions. Procalcitonin is thought to be more specific for infectious conditions because its release is stimulated by bacterial endotoxins. Now, a number of other uh, markers have been investigated in small trials and are not as widely studied, so I'm going to focus this talk on CRP and procalcitonin from here on out. You can see in this chart on the right, uh, this is from a systematic review and meta-analysis from a few years ago, uh, which included data from uh, almost 2,500 patients. And uh, this is showing their CRP levels by post-operative day. And the white circles show patients that had elective colorectal surgeries that um, were not complicated by any infectious process or leak. The light blue circles show patients with any infectious complication. And the black circles show patients with an anastomotic leak. And what you can see is that uh, at around post-operative day two, those curves start to diverge from the normal patients, and that remains persistently elevated uh, for the subsequent days after that. So when we look at the kinetics of CRP levels and procalcitonin levels postoperatively, there's some similarities between them. This is a, a set of charts from the IMACOR study, which was a French multi-center trial uh, that looked prospectively at the diagnostic accuracy for CRP and procalcitonin for infectious complications in general, organ space infections, or an astomotic leak. And what you can see is in both of these cases, the blue lines are the patients without those complications, and the red lines are those that, that had them. And again, around postoperative day two, those curves start to diverge. But I also want to point out that the interquartile ranges shown by the dashed lines overlap considerably. So there's some question about where we draw the line between a patient we would call normal and unconcerning and the one that we'd be concerned about might have a leak. And this is additional data from that same study. You know, one of the things we need to sort out is, well, when's the best time to check these things to get the best diagnostic value? And are there objective cutoffs that we should use in making decisions about our patients clinically? So the chart on the left shows the area under the curve for the ROC curves for both CRP and procalcitonin by postoperative day. And you can see that they're most accurate on postoperative day four, and CRP might be a little bit better. And then when you look at postoperative day four specifically, they used cutoff values of 100 for CRP and 0.25 for procalcitonin. What stands out is that the negative predictive value is quite good. It's well over 90%. But the sensitivity and specificity perhaps are not as good. This is from a recent retrospective study um, looking at about 500 patients uh, and looking just at CRP, uh, again, at multiple time points and with multiple cutoffs to try to elucidate where it is of, of the most diagnostic value. And as you can see on the chart on the right, these are the ROC curves by postoperative day. And after about postoperative day two, each day you go out, the CRP becomes more accurate. Now, the area under the curve is still not, you know, as ideal as we would like, but it still approaches about 0.8 by day five. And when they broke that down by cutoff values, um, you can see that a low cutoff value of 100 um, still has a, a very good negative predictive value of nearly 90%. Um, but the positive predictive value, or the specificity, is really only good with a high cutoff value around day five. And again, in, in the the ERAS patient, they may not be in the hospital by that time. How do I go back? There we go. So what happens if you look at them together? So 
there's a study out of Italy, a prospective study from a few years ago, that looked at both CRP and procalcitonin and compared their diagnostic accuracy at these various time points. And what they found was that, um, you can see in the, the left and middle graph, those are the res receiver operating uh, characteristic curves for uh, procalcitonin in blue, CRP, and white blood cell count in red on days three and five. And again, procalcitonin and CRP appear to be somewhat more accurate at day five. But when they looked at them together, the ROC curves improved, and that was statistically significant at day five for them. So there may be some benefit to measuring both of these things together, particularly at an earlier time point where it might affect your decision making. But again, I want to hit home the, the point that the negative predictive value is consistently high across all of these studies. But what else might affect your inflammatory markers and um, might make it difficult to establish a consistent cutoff value? Well, surgical approach has been postulated to make a difference, and a few studies have looked at that. As we know, laparoscopic surgery induces less of an inflammatory response postoperatively. And indeed, in the chart on the left from a study looking at anastomotic leak by surgical approach, you can see that the CRP values for the patients without the leak in pink um, are lower as a mean for laparoscopic versus open approach, and I've, I've highlighted the level of 150 so that you can see that. But what's also interesting is that the kinetics are different. So the open patients had a CRP level that remained elevated for all the way through postoperative day six, um, whereas for laparoscopic patients, it dropped sooner. And so actually, a laparoscopic patient with a leak at day five had the same CRP level at, on the, as a mean um, versus the pa open patients who had no leaks at all. And so it brings up the question of, should we have different cutoff values for um, what we consider a low-risk patient based on their surgical approach? The chart on the, on the right also shows something similar from a different study, where the blue and yellow lines are patients that had laparoscopic and open surgery, respectively, who had leaks. And the um, orange and uh, light blue lines are patients who did not with an open approach or laparoscopic approach. There's other potential confounders that we don't really have enough data to draw conclusions about when we want to try to use these markers in caring for our patients. One is the indication for surgery. So one might postulate that IBD patients might have a different inflammatory profile than our cancer patients, but IBD patients have often been excluded or underrepresented in these studies, so we don't really know what kind of a difference that makes, if any. And most of the studies, but not all, exclude emergencies, which again may have a very different um, profile or might be um, subject to different types of complications that could affect these markers. I've listed other uh, potential confounders or other factors that might influence CRP or procalcitonin postoperatively that have been suggested or uh, borne out in univariate and multivariate analyses in some smaller studies. And of course, whether a patient's enrolled in an ERS protocol um, might make a difference, as well as the highly variable study definition of what a leak or infectious complication might be. When you're thinking about incorporating this into your clinical use, I think what is um, universally accepted is that if you have marker values that are low for either CRP or procalcitonin after about day three, you could conclude that early discharge is safe. But knowing what a low value is, is maybe subject to some debate. If your markers are more elevated, that's going to be where you're going to need to use some clinical judgment or put together an algorithm for how you want to manage those patients. And um, delaying their discharge, perhaps rechecking those markers at a later time when the, the results are more specific, getting additional testing such as early imaging or following them more closely as an outpatient might be appropriate. It's important to note that procalcitonin has a cost that's two to three times that of CRP, and since its benefit hasn't been well established over CRP, insurance may not cover it. So in summary, um, using these inflammatory markers is best for their negative predictive value for ruling out who you can safely discharge early, um, but is more accurate the further you get from your postoperative day uh, zero. Um, Establishing range cutoffs for normal or abnormal testings have, have been elusive, but a CRP of 100 is probably a reasonable um, cutoff to use to send someone home early. And um, the surgical approach and other confounders may affect that.
The best way to manage a patient with elevated markers hasn't really been clearly defined, but no test substitutes for your clinical judgment. Thank you. Thank you.